welcome back to Didsbury Art Studio. I'm Sally, if you've not met me before, and in today's video we're going to be looking at stitch resist. So we're going to be using some thick thread and then dyeing fabric. So basically it's like painting with stitch, so I'm really excited to get into this today. And if you're new to me and you like this video, do subscribe, leave a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up, that would be great. And let's get into this. So for this first stitch resist one, we're going to do 12 inches across and 16 inches down. And I've divided it up into two inches rows, four rows of just runner stitch. And then I'm going to do just one more down here um, and I'm going to use my upholstery thread and I've really made sure that I've got a very thick knot. I've drawn out my lines with a water erasable pen. Five rows of just runner stitch. Make sure that your thread, your upholstery thread, is much longer than the length of the fabric and we're just going to do runner stitch from one end to the other. Okay, so once we've sewn the runner stitch in all of the rows, then we're going to carefully pull the threads and gather the fabric, like so. So just pull really tight, it's gathering your fabric in, like I've already done on those other rows. Make sure that you put a double knot. The tighter you do the pulling, the more precise and accurate and sharper the um, print will come out. So I'm trying to get the knots right up by the end of the gathering there. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is a serviette actually, and I've drawn out four circles, so I've just folded it in half, folded it in half again, and then carefully drawn out three circles with my water erasable pen, like so, all similar size, and then I'm going to again sew, just run a stitch all the way around the perimeter of the circle. So there we have it. As you can see, um, this fabric, by the way, um, charity shop, I always try and collect really nice vintage fabrics. And this is obviously more square, so it's better for the circles to be drawn out. So what I'm gonna do now is literally start pulling the thread bunches up. I just want to get that as tight as possible. I'm just gonna put a couple of knots on the top of there because I don't want it to come through the fabric. This next one again is back to the 12 inches by 16 inches, divided it into three rows and I've done this zigzag effect. I'm going to sew from this end over to here, really make sure that your knots are really chunky and thin. So this fabric I got again from a charity shop. I just love some of the oldie worldy fabrics. Hopefully it'll be quite nice to dye. And you can see just on the edges there, I've brought the little zigzag up a little bit higher than the edge because I don't want it to come off. Then we're going to just carefully brush that fabric and gather it up like so. So that 
that's the zigzag one finished. Tied off the knots and cut the thread. See that? And see for this final one, this table linen, might be a table runner, um, from a charity shop. And literally I've done the zigzags, um, obviously widthways. So I'll just finish off this last one. What I do here. to start off with, I just measure the thread all the way across the width of the fabric so that I know I'm going to make it. So that's finished and all that's left to do is pull the thread again. So I'm just going to pull that up. Tight. <laughs> Okay, so we have got the large zigzag piece, we've got the smaller zigzag piece. Again, these are all on different types of fabric, so we'll see how the die takes. That is four circles, and that is the first one with the straight lines. So I'm loving them just as they are, actually. Look at that for texture. Anyway, let's get on with the dyeing process. Indigo dye. Right then, I've got my indigo ripped dye with my salt mixed in and put my rubber gloves on and I'm going to literally just pop these in here. I just dampened them off in water to begin with and then I'm just going to keep them soaked in here. Let's just turn those around a little bit to sit in there. For a little while until the dye starts taking. You could just make sure that all of the fabric is totally coated so you can move the pieces around, tip them upside down <laughs> and I'm just going to leave that in for about 30 minutes. I'm going to rinse each of these out firstly with warm water and then cold water. Then after you've done that, you need to just literally get your scissors and just very carefully start snipping the thread out. And then you can just see that that is taken amazingly, I love it. There we go. So I'll do the rest and then we put them on a cold wash in the washing machine and then leave to dry. that have come out and I'm really pleased with the results. For me as an artist, art teacher, you know these would be great for resources for me to take into schools and use in schools um, and also the process of the whole thing is magic basically. I just love the excitement of seeing how things come out and the experimentation so I hope you can enjoy this process as well. So, here we go. This one was the first one that we did with the um, straight lines. So you can see it's caught on the lines there. And then this one, obviously you can see the sort of stitch line that's been created. I love that one, super. Um, and then circular one. I think probably if it had a stronger die, those would pop out a little bit more, but it is nice and subtle, I like that one. And then finally, um, what do you think of this one? You can also see on the back it's taken quite well too. Um, so really happy with those. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video today and you had fun watching it and learnt something new. I will be back next week and maybe another video in between time. So other than that, have a lovely week and I'll see you soon. Bye bye! bye, -bye.